When an object falls, its energy changes from gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy, movement energy. And we can use the equations for both of these quantities to work out the maximum possible speed of a falling body. So in this example, we've got an apple, which is falling from a tree. The apple has a mass of 0.2 kilograms, and it's falling a distance of 4 meters from a tree to the ground below. Uh, first thing we need to do is to calculate the change in gravitational potential energy of the apple. And we're given that the gravitational field strength, and that's usually given the symbol little g, is 10 newtons of force for every kilogram. And the second part of the calculation, we will then use that gravitational potential energy that we've calculated to work out the maximum possible speed of the apple by using the equation for kinetic energy. So let's dive in and see how we can do this. So for part A, we're looking for the gravitational potential energy. So let's just pop that in our list of data. So we'll call that EP for energy potential or potential energy. And in this case, we want to find that. And that's going to be in joules. We know that the mass of the apple is 0.2 kilograms. We know that the gravitational field strength is 10 newtons per kilogram. And we know that the height it falls is, let's have a check, is 4 meters. 4 meters. So the equation we're going to use is that the gravitational potential energy, the change in gravitational potential energy, is equal to the mass times the gravitational field strength times the height that it's fallen through. So let's put the numbers into this equation now. So m is the mass, 0.2. By the way, if this was given in grams, 200 grams, then we would have to convert it into kilograms as a standard unit. And we're going to multiply that by 10 and multiplied by the height it falls through, falls through which is 4 meters. And we'll get uh, 8 from that calculation, 8 joules. So we can say that the changing gravitational potential energy of this apple, the energy it loses as it falls, is 8 joules. Now where does that 8 joules go? Well it must go into kinetic energy. To kinetic energy, Ke, sometimes given the symbol Ek. So let's now in part b work out its maximum velocity and we're going to assume that the air resistance is negligible because this apple will feel air resistance and it will slow it down a little bit. But for this example, we're going to uh, treat that air resistance as, uh, as zero. Otherwise, it would convert some of that kinetic energy into heat. So we're going to ignore it in this example. Let's do a list to start with. So first of all, the kinetic energy gained by the apple must be the 8 joules that it's lost of gravitational potential energy. What else do we know? We know its mass, 0.2 kilograms. We know, um, we know the gravitational field strength. Um, we know the height. But in this case, all that we're really interested in is the maximum speed, v, velocity. So we're going to put that as the question mark, and that will come out in meters per second. The equation we're going to use is that the kinetic energy of a body is a half multiplied by the mass multiplied by its velocity squared. So let's put some numbers in and see if we can solve this to make v the subject and solve to find the maximum speed. So 8 is equal to a half times by 0.2, I'm using brackets in this instance to denote multiplication, multiplied by v squared. We need to make v the subject. Let's first of all 
work this bit out. So we get 8 is equal to 0.1 v squared and then divide both sides by 0.1 by 0.1 and we would get 80 is equal to v squared and how do we get v on its own without the squared? Well we need to square root both sides now and so we will get that v is the square root of 80 and that is 8.9 to one decimal place meters per second and so we've gone through the process of listing our data of the equation putting the numbers in that's solving it and then stating the answer the velocity is 8.9 meters per second now that's the maximum velocity this apple could have just before it hits the ground in, a, in reality it will be a bit less than that because friction in the air resistance will have taken away some of this kinetic energy and converted it into heat. Hope that makes sense. See you in the next flashcard.